There are many ways you can find places like this to camp, but the best way is to have good friends show you their favorite spots. This is Limestone Mountain, and to tell our story of our adventure here, we're going to have to pause and rewind and take you back to the first time we came here and the story that unfolded. So come along with us as this adventure dog shares not one, but two of our great adventures. A little over a year ago now, we got together with Jason from Overland, Alberta, and Paul and his family from Reese's Peanut Butter Truck. The plan was to fill up and then head to Limestone Mountain, where Jason would show us some of his favorite camping spots. After Barrett's morning donut, that is. After getting together and doing a quick highway drive, it was back into the countryside where we let the dogs stretch their legs before we would start to climb up the mountains. Of course, not without having a little fun first. At the base of the mountain, the snow wasn't too bad. In fact, we were getting kind of dirty down here. But as we would start to climb, we would find that the deeper snow was still there waiting for us. A few more turns to go and we would all find ourselves staring at the views that we always miss the most. Look at that view. Alberta, as always, you have so much to offer. Whether you're sightseeing, overlanding, hiking, or camping, we are definitely spoiled here. At this point, we had discovered that the road had not been maintained all the way up to the fire lookout, and the snow was just too deep on top of Limestone Mountain. So this year, we wouldn't make it to the top. So we found a spot around the middle of the mountain that we could all set up and just have a great night together. Of course, the deep snow was still everywhere, and me being in my stock F-150 at the time, and being the newest overlander out of the three of us, I'm the one that would get stuck first. Everything is a learning experience, and at the time, I got to learn about soft shackles, which was a new thing for me at that time. Avoiding the deep spots in the snow, we all backed ourselves in for our positions for the night and began to set up camp. Yeah, we weren't camping on top of Limestone Mountain, but the views from here, they're pretty good as far as I'm concerned. With everyone set up, it was time to get a fire going. Ha, ha, ha. 
It's easy to say that I look forward to days and nights like this with friends all the time. As we started to lose daylight, everyone was cooking dinner and it was time to just start relaxing around the fire, laughing about how I completely destroyed my new drone. With the temperature dropping quickly, it was time for everybody to pack up for the night and get some sleep. With a nice, bright, sunny day ahead of us, we had one goal today. We would come down from the mountains near Limestone and circle back in to try and find some of Alberta's wild horses. And boy, did we find them. With all the good times had on this trip, my brain couldn't stop thinking about getting back to Limestone Mountain in the future and finally making it to the top of the mountain. That summer, we had a big trip planned in BC and we were gonna do a lot of upgrades in a short amount of time to make sure that long trip could happen. But with doing that, we also guaranteed a successful run of Limestone Mountain next winter. Like Barrett said, the truck was ready and it was finally winter and time to return to Limestone Mountain. This year we would be solo, but like last year, we were blessed with an absolutely gorgeous day and beautiful weather. Right here is the point we could not get to last time. The point where the snow was just too deep. And it still was deep this year, but we had the right equipment and the right build to finally make it all the way up to the fire lookout. As the snow got deeper, I decided to air down just to give us a little bit more traction. It's so quiet and peaceful up here, you can even hear the air leave my tires. And of course, Barrett doesn't mind stretching his legs. Now we are ready to go finish the final climb up to the top. It 
In my excitement to get to the top of the mountain, there was two factors I wasn't accounting for. The wind and the sun glare on the snow. Both were so strong up here that it was very hard for me to operate my drone. I'll just look on the bright side, pun intended, that I'll have to come back here in the future and shoot some more drone shots on a less sunny day. Not exactly a bad thing. Despite the difficulties with the drone, we managed to get some great photos up here and Barrett still had himself a great time. Now with the wind starting to get to us, it was time to come down the mountain a bit and find a spot to make camp. There is absolutely something special to be said about camping on an entire mountain by yourself. As the sun went down, I put the drone up in the sky one more time hoping to get the shot I was looking for. Ending the night, feeling completely accomplished, I started up the diesel heater, got some food, and settled in for the night. As I packed up in the morning, I couldn't help but feel we had to go up the mountain one more time just to see how absolutely beautiful it was as this trip felt like a year in the making from the first time we were here with friends up till now. It ended up being a good reminder to always follow your gut instinct and never stop pushing for the things you want.
from me and Barrett, thank you for watching, and as always, we'll catch you in the wild. If you feel like you need more limestone adventures, head over to Overland Alberta's page and Jason has his own video of our adventure together. I'll leave the link in the description.